well, what we have here actually is a uh, is a, uh, a geometry sketchpad um, that shows the unit circle, and this is the angle that is uh, described, you know, by this endpoint on the unit circle, point D. DAE is the angle that we are keeping track of. If we animate this point, we'll be able to see that the numbers are changing here, indicative of that. And if we choose to stop right there, that'll be good enough. Okay. Now, at this point, um, we are going to show the sine of the angle, and that would correspond to the y value right here, which is determined by the projection point when we project this point D on this y axis. That would give us this distance right here, which represents in the unit circle, represents the x coordinate, uh, the y coordinate. And at the same time, it is representing the sine function. Now, I took this distance here and I translated it right there. So now, hopefully, what we're going to be able to see is that as the point D is animated around, this point is going to be oscillating up and down. And this should show up right here as well. But then we're going to make this point C translate right here. And in doing so, we should be obtaining something that looks like this. As we can see from this, the y coordinate of the point D on the unit circle is describing this wonderful function graph right there that is representing the sine function. And as soon as the graph you know comes back, we are going to stop this and we are going to illustrate what happens when we have a cosine animated. So I believe that will stop right there. That's good. Okay. Now, at this point, we are going to show the cosine function. And in this case, as you can see right here, this is the value of the cosine, which is the x coordinate. And it should show up in pink. Right now, it's not showing up because, you know, the, point, the D point is almost at the y axis right there. So there is no horizontal, you know, uh, coordinate showing. Here we go. Let's animate that. Now we're assuming the cosine along with the sign. Notice how the two curves are with respect to each other. Watch what happens here as the cosine gets smaller. Notice how, you know, see, gets bigger here by comparison to the sign. And watch on the display here how this kind of manifests itself. As soon as we get the point D to show up in the first quadrant, we're going to stop that again. Or maybe let's do the whole additional cycle until the point returns right there. So let's stop it as soon as it shows up on the left side. And stop. Good. Now we're going to show the tangent. And as you can see here, the tangent is represented by this segment right there, which is actually part of the whole tangent line that is tangent to the inner circle, plus the mean tangent. Now, at this point, let's animate this as well. And at this point, we can see the action of all these three. But 
at the tangent. How would this point to infinity? It comes from negative infinity, goes to the zero, and then continues again, exploding up to infinity. And as you can see here, you know, the mapping of you know the tangent function is between negative infinity to infinity as opposed to the sine and cosine that are limited to a value between negative one and one. At the same time, as you can see here, the values are reflective of what's going on overall. And of course, pay attention to the names on the curves right here. Now, of course, uh, my students, when I first showed this, they were fascinated by actually wanted to see it, you know, for a little bit longer. And uh, I asked them, why is there a little bit of an offset every time that, you know, the point D completes a cycle? And it would be interesting for the viewer of this video to try to explain that. And when I post this on my website, my blog, I hope, you know, people would try to uh, explain that as to why there is this offset. Why doesn't the curve of the sine and the cosine and the tangent remain at the same spot and map over and over again over itself? That could be a good thing. So we'll, we'll leave this, you know, kind of playing for a while here to enjoy the nice pattern that will emerge. It's kind of artistic, and it really does show that there is beauty to mathematics. It is an art. Beautiful, isn't it? Now in class, I also explain the idea that, you know, in this case, the sine and the cosine wave, waves could be representing, you know, a sound you know, emanating from a, a tuning fork, and the amplitude is a reflect is a a display of what we call, you know, the volume in a sense, or you know how how loud the sound is, while the the period, for example, in this case, is related to the pitch of the tuning fork. So that's a connection that we like to establish from a physics point of view. And at this point here, it looks like we are, I think this is good enough, or should we keep maybe a few more cycles? Of course, the periodic nature of this is quite obvious. Um, and that's what gives it the beautiful aspect that you see right now. Humans are always fascinated by things that are symmetric and periodic in nature.
By the way, um, if I have the time one of these days, I'll uh, actually show how I was able to put this together. We did it uh, actually in class, and it was in a spur of a moment that I put this together, but then I enhanced things a little bit by um, showing more than just the sine function graphs. I think maybe after one more I'm going to go ahead and stop this. I think we got the gist of it. I think this is it. After this, I'm going to stop it. Kind of got the idea behind this. Okay, there we go. As soon as they reach the end screen again, I'm going to stop this and stop. I hope you enjoyed this and ask yourself quite a bit of questions related to this wonderful um, set of animations. Thank you.